Prisoner William Hughes is being driven to court for a standard hearing. He is being tried for SA and grievous bodily harm. He is an incredibly violent criminal. He's handcuffed to a prison officer, Kenneth, in the back of the car, and a second prison officer, Donald, sits in the front. William states that he needs the toilet, so they pull over and let him use a public restroom. Whilst in there, William retrieves a boning knife that he has secretly hidden. He gets back in the taxi, is re-handcuffed to Kenneth. They drive shortly down the road before William plunges the boning knife into Donald the second prison officer sitting in the front seat. He then turns his attention to Kenneth and starts slashing at his face and hands, rendering both prison officers incapacitated. He demands that they unlock the handcuffs. They do so and he instructs the driver to continue down the road. They eventually stop and William chucks all three of them out, climbs into the driver's seat and speeds away. William drives down the road and in his haste, he crashes the car. He gets out and starts running across the moors. Police are informed that a violent convict is on the loose. They discover the crashed car and assume that he has made his way into town. They think it's highly unlikely that he crossed the moors in such snowy blizzard conditions. So they start looking at the local villages in the completely opposite direction to where William actually went. What follows is truly horrifying. In these ferocious blizzard conditions, William Hughes walks for two hours across these treacherous moors. He comes to a village east moor and spots Pottery Cottage. Pottery Cottage is a quaint little converted barn split into three apartments. The middle section at the time was unoccupied. One end was owned by a couple who were school teachers, Leonard and Joyce, and the other end was owned by a family, the Mintons. Residing in the Minton home were a retired elderly couple, Arthur and Amy Minton. They were in their early 70s, late 60s. Their daughter, Gillian, lived with them along with her husband, Richard, and their 10-year-old daughter, Sarah. It was a very loving and warm home with three generations pottering about this small, quaint cottage. On the day that William Hughes escaped, Arthur and Amy Minton were relaxing in their cottage when William walked through the back door armed with two axes that he had retrieved from their shed. He told them the truth. He said he was an escaped convict, he'd stabbed two prison officers, and he needed to lie low for a little while. If they cooperated, he would not harm them. So Arthur and Amy Minton carry on their day. They try to be as relaxed as possible. They try to remain calm. This is a quaint little English village town where nothing really happens. And now an escaped prisoner armed with axes is in their home. Their daughter Gillian arrives home around 3 p.m. shortly followed by their granddaughter Sarah. Gillian the mother explains to Sarah that William is just a stranded motorist. He won't be here for long and she didn't want to scare her daughter. So they just kind of carry on with their day. And for the most part it is actually quite friendly. Sarah sits and does her sewing in the living room People exchange pleasantries. It's not a very tense situation. After a while, Sarah and her grandfather, Arthur, go up to the annex to watch telly. As the hours roll on, William is getting more and more anxious as he awaits the arrival of Richard, Gillian's husband. And by the time Richard arrives home at 6 p.m., he walks in to find William Hughes holding a boning knife up to his wife's neck. He's threatening to kill her if anyone dare approaches him. The mood has drastically changed as the time has gone on. William is getting more and more nervous, more and more agitated. So Richard has arrived home from work, expecting another ordinary day. However, he has walked into this horrific scene and William ends up grabbing him, throwing him to the floor, and binding his legs and arms together. 
he uses the power cable from a vacuum cleaner and part of a washing line. He then ties up Gillian, Richard's wife, and Amy, the grandmother, in a similar fashion. All these people have started their day just as any other, and now they find themselves being bound and gagged by an escaped convict in their own home. As William tries to tie up Amy, the grandmother, she is petrified. She starts screaming hysterically, and this alerts Arthur and Sarah, who were watching telly in the annex. They come down, and on walking into the living room, Arthur sees his wife, Amy, being tied and gagged. He is furious and he confronts William, asking him to leave, telling him not to touch his family. Sarah, the 10-year-old granddaughter, is also scared. She's screaming at William, don't hurt my mummy, don't hurt my daddy, don't you dare. William Hughes is a dangerous and uncaring man. He just grabs Arthur and throws him to the floor. He then drags this pensioner across the living room floor and binds him to an armchair. Sarah is now stood in a room where all of her family members are bound and gagged. She is so scared, she goes mute and just sits on the floor. But the torture is far from over. William Hughes then picks up each individual family member and places them in a different room, isolating all of them. And this is how they spend their first night. All of them can hear horrific things happening throughout the night, but they can do absolutely nothing. Gillian could hear her 72-year-old father being ferociously beaten downstairs. Richard could hear William Hughes essaying his wife next door. William then spent the rest of the night sat with Richard chatting to him like they were old mates, making cups of tea for everyone and boasting about his violent criminal past. After a harrowing night, early next morning, a lorry pulls up to the cottage. It's the council and they're there to empty the septic tank. William instructs Gillian to go and get rid of them. He unties her, and as she passes through the home, she sees her father sitting in the armchair, motionless with a coat over him. William drags Gillian away and says, there's nothing to worry about, he's just asleep, and I've placed a coat over him to keep him warm. Gillian couldn't see any blood or injuries, so she believed him. Gillian swiftly speaks to the council workers, trying her best to remain calm and not arouse any suspicion. She returns and discovers that her father has been moved. He's no longer in the armchair. William says that he moved him to a bedroom in order for him to sleep. She asks after her 10-year-old daughter, Sarah, to which William says, don't worry, she's asleep in the annex. William then forces Gillian to phone in sick for work. He also asks Richard to do the same and for them to phone the school to say that Sarah wasn't coming in today. He then sends Gillian into town to get some food, cigarettes and alcohol and to see if there are any roadblocks anywhere. He warns her not to do anything stupid and reminds her that he's got her entire family tied up in the cottage. Arriving back, Gillian and her mother Amy are instructed to make a proper meal for everybody. They cook together and when finished, William takes platefuls of food into the rooms where Arthur and Sarah are supposedly being kept unharmed. Gillian, however, begins to get suspicious and she questions William as to why Sarah hasn't asked for her comfort towel, something that Sarah has slept with pretty much every night since she was a baby. William just kind of shrugs it off and says, no, she hasn't mentioned it. But he agrees to take it into her anyway. And when he comes back out, he says that she was chuffed that she was allowed to have it, but forbid Gillian or Richard to go in and see their child. William says that Arthur and Sarah are alive and unharmed just in other rooms and he continues to bring tea and food and snacks for them throughout the day. He then announces that he's leaving that evening. Enough time has passed that he reckons he can get away. He unties 
Amy, Richard and Gillian and they spend the evening playing cards and drinking. He even attempts to teach his hostages how to play the Chinese version of Patience. It's his final night in that cottage and he just kind of wants to chill out and have some fun before he leaves. However, this is Northern England and it's the heart of winter. There has been continuous snowfall for days. So when he tries to leave using Richard's car, he is unsuccessful. So William decides to stay for another night. The family spend another night isolated in separate rooms, bound and gagged. In the morning, Gillian asks William if Sarah can come and sleep alongside her mother as she must be completely petrified. Gillian noticed that William tensed up, looked petrified and denied that request. She said she never mentioned it again as she didn't want to scare William and make him do something that then may harm her daughter. Throughout these two days, the police are scouring the area. There are 200 police officers, helicopters looking for William Hughes. However, the heavy snowfall is seriously hampering their efforts. They conclude that William must have sought refuge in a home and is holding the occupants hostages. They set up a search radius to look in every household. However, Pottery Cottage is just 200 yards outside of that radius. The following morning rolls around and William declares that he is leaving today, but he needs supplies. For example, things like a camping stove if he's going to survive in the wilderness. He sends Gillian and Richard into town to get these things. They stop at a traffic light and Richard tries to convince his wife Gillian to get help. Gillian sternly refuses. She says, he's got our daughter. I don't want him doing anything to her. I'm not going to risk it. So they go and get these supplies and return to the cottage. All three hostages by this point are on the brink of basically a nervous breakdown. They have been on high alert for nearly three days now. When they return, William Hughes describes this conversation that he's had with Arthur and Sarah. Later on, we'll discover that this was completely fabricated. Before William Hughes leaves, he binds and gags Richard and Amy again. He takes Gillian as a hostage and says that once he's gotten far enough, he'll release her. William Hughes and Gillian head off in the car, leaving Richard and Amy bound in Pottery Cottage. They get some way down the road and out of town when William insists that he needs to go back to Pottery Cottage because he's forgotten his map. They return and William exits and goes back into Pottery Cottage. Gillian at this point remains in the car. William enters Pottery Cottage and proceeds to stab Richard and Amy to death. He comes back out and tries to start the car again. He's turning the key, but the engine won't turn on. He is furious by this point and really frustrated. He orders Gillian to go to the end of the cottage where the couple who are a teacher live, Leonard and Joyce. Gillian is bordering on like comatose by this point. She is absolutely petrified. So she walks up to this teacher's cottage and knocks on the door. Leonard and Joyce open the front door and they immediately see that something is wrong with Gillian. Three days of pure fear has meant Gillian is nearly basically unconscious by this point. And she's not even speaking to them. She's kind of croaking at them. And she says, Len, for God's sake, help us. The couple who had no phone at that point immediately drive into town to use a phone box to call the police. William Hughes sees Leonard and Joyce speeding off and immediately know the game's up. He starts screaming at Gillian, saying, what the hell have you done? He is really angry. Whilst he is doing this, Gillian and William Hughes turn to see Amy, the 68-year-old grandmother, who has just been viciously stabbed multiple times pulling herself out of the lower window. She is covered in blood and she starts staggering across the driveway 
towards them before just collapsing yards away from William Hughes and Gillian's feet. Gillian has just witnessed her mother covered in blood pull herself out of a window, stagger across a snow-filled driveway covered in blood, clearly dying and then just collapsing in front of her. Gillian by this point is at her wit's end. William is screaming at her to run but she's not moving. She's just she's absolutely gone by this point through pure fear she just she cannot move by this point Gillian and so William just grabs her in a fireman's lift and runs he gets to a neighboring house Ronald Frost who is actually a mechanic and orders him to fix the car Ronald immediately can see that something is wrong something's not right so he purposefully takes his time fixing this car for William. His wife Marge also contacted the police from their home. Ronald gets the car going and William jumps in, throws Gillian in and they speed off to the local town Baslow. Where the teacher couple had already informed the police, they have already set up a perimeter. Not only are they everywhere, they've also arrived at Pottery Cottage and found Amy Minton's lifeless body on the driveway lying face upwards. On entering the premises, they find the bodies of Richard, Arthur and Amy. All have been stabbed to death. All of them have been stabbed and it's evident that they eventually died of blood loss and shock. Sarah, the 10 year old girl, was found in the fetal position on the bedroom floor, stabbed to death. Arthur, the grandfather, was found with his arms bound behind his back. Both Sarah and Arthur had been murdered that very first night that William held everyone hostage. He then proceeded to make out that they were still alive bringing in tea and biscuits and food for them and fabricating conversations. The hunt for an escaped convict has now turned into a hunt for a serial killer and this ends up being a high-speed car chase across the Derbyshire countryside. One police car cuts straight in front of William, causing him to swerve and crash. He scrambles out and holds Gillian to him, threatening to kill her if they didn't give him another car. The police, knowing what he can do, gave him another car and the high-speed chase begins again. So what the police do is they position a bus in one of the villages so that when William comes speeding in, he is forced to swerve, which causes him to crash into a wall. By this point, there are dozens of police officers in this area and William again gets out of the car, hauls Gillian out with him and holds an ax over her head. He is threatening to decapitate her if any policeman comes anywhere near him. The police officer in charge, an inspector, offers himself up, says that he will make a swap. He will swap himself for Gillian and William can hold him hostage instead. William denies this, he doesn't want that at all. William demands another car and the police do not want any more fatalities, so they give him another car. However, by this point, Gillian is done. She cannot move. She is actually now refusing to move. She physically can't. Her body has shut down. So they remain in this standoff with William holding an ax over Gillian's head with police surrounding him for nearly an hour. After an hour, William has had enough and he decides that he's going to decapitate Gillian. So he raises the ax and goes to murder Gillian. The leading police officer, the inspector, launches himself through the rear window of one of the cars and manages to block most of the blow so that this ax only kind of gashes Gillian's forehead. At the same time that this inspector throws himself through a car window and pushes Gillian out the way to make sure she is not seriously harmed, one shot is fired and it ends up ricocheting off of Hugh's skull. 
This angers him more and he raises the axe again and aims it again at Jillian. As he's raising this axe, three shots are fired. One of them hits his major artery and he is killed instantly. William Hughes, lifeless body, falls into Jillian's lap. As if this woman has not been through enough, she has now been threatened to be decapitated twice and now the person that has murdered her entire family and nearly murdered her, his lifeless bloody body has just fallen on top of her. Two months after this horrific incident, investigations are done to see what could have been done to stop this convict escaping. Changes are implemented, but no disciplinary action is ever taken. William Hughes' death was considered a justifiable homicide and the inspector, the superintendent, that flung himself through the car window preventing Hughes from murdering Gillian is awarded the Queen's Commendation for Brave Conduct. Gillian was treated for injuries first and then only after she was dispatched from hospital they told her that her entire family had been murdered. Four years later, Gillian remarried a man called Jim Mulgreen, who was actually her husband's cousin. They had a daughter together, but Gillian's life wasn't a happy one. She drunk heavily to deal with the emotional trauma of those events, and her and Jim ended up divorcing. Her family had been held hostage for three days, while a fugitive, William Hughes, played macabre psychological games with them. All the while, killing them one by one. She sat and played cards with this man while her 10-year-old daughter, unbeknown to her, lay dead in the next room. That was the story of Pottery Cottage. If you like my content, please remember to like, subscribe and comment and I will see you in the next one.